Welcome to another exciting and elucidating episode of the OmniTalk Spotlight Series. I'm your host, Chris Walton. And I'm Ann Mazinga. And we are the founders of OmniTalk, the fast-growing retail media company that is all about the companies, the technologies, and the people that are coming together to shape the future of retail. Or as we like to say, the media company that focuses on tomorrow's companies today. And I am so geeked up for this podcast. I can tell. Yeah. How, can I don't you? know. You're just like, you got the some energy levels your high, step, the voice. Yeah. The intro. You're just, you're ready to go. I am because this the, today we're spotlighting a company that I was introduced to it by a friend of mine. And when he yes. told me about it, I was like, holy, you know what? Yeah. That is so freaking cool. I remember you coming in and grabbing me. I was in the next room and you're like, I got to tell you about this. Yeah. And I, I was like, we got to do a podcast. We yeah. got to do a podcast. Yeah. And we finally are doing it today. And so not to keep you in suspense any longer, OmniTalk fans, but that cool that I'm describing is something that the industry is calling embedded finance. And joining us today to share his expertise on that subject is Yuval Brisker, the CEO and president of All the Air. Yuval, welcome to the show. Hi there. Great to be here. It's good to have you. And um, Yuval, you're in a very special location today. Uh, and- why don't you tell us a little bit about where you are? I'm in Lisbon, Portugal. Uh, Yes, I'm sorry. And you have (laughs) a a beautiful day outside. It's not even that hot. Can you believe it? Yeah. Uh, And you're not even, you're not just vacationing there for the summer. This is a, this is an office that you have over in Lisbon. huh? I would call it my second home. Um, You know, I have, we have uh, our company, which I'll talk about a little bit, has a development center here. Really all of our technology is being built in Lisbon. Lisbon has become kind of a major technology hub um, and uh, both high level of education, great people, lots of people speaking English, you know, and of course technology is hot. So they've picked it up and they're running with it like crazy. And we have about 70 people working here in, uh, in, in, in Lisbon. And I'm, it's a pleasure for me because I get to come here every, every, every time I decide I really need yeah. a job. Yeah. Yeah. You've all, I, I already like your style. I like, I like the, the vibe, the Lisbon vibe. Um, but let's get to the first come on like, over. Uh, yeah. I mean, Hey, you know, I, we're not well, kidding. We'll, we'll, we'll jump in. My favorite is second home is Portugal is Lisbon, Portugal and Cleveland. I think that's, that's the part <laughs> right. I know about you. You've all right. that I think we need to make sure that the audience knows too. So right. I don't know. I would probably put first home if I had that choice, but Hey, no offense to Cleveland, hey, but you know, I'm a, I'm a big, I'm a big Cleveland fan too. I mean, you know, I like underdog places. I think, you know, you know, where everybody goes doesn't mean that it's always good. Right? Yes. So, true. You know, that's hundred percent. Right. That's hundred percent. Right. It's all about finding the gem, you know, somewhere that nobody else has discovered. So yes. Cleveland, a little bit like that. And by the way, I was actually talking to a friend today and when I started coming to Lisbon, it wasn't so hot as it is today. It was, yeah. it was, it was a lot less hot. So I kind of give myself credit for some discoveries here. Well, let's talk about some of your other discoveries, Yuval. I want to hear about embedded finance and Alvier. What is it? And explain a little bit about the background to the audience, please. Right. Well, embedded finance is really a, is, is really a, a, um, a technology uh, set, really a platform that helps any brand provide financial services to its customers, employees, fans, um, and, and really do it without having to, you know, to, 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 you know, be exposed to all the heavy lifting that it takes to become a financial services provider. Right. Meaning, you know, uh, if you're thinking about financial services, you're thinking banks, you're thinking investment, you know, you're thinking stocks, you're thinking, you know, saving, you're thinking FDIC, you're thinking government, right. You know, you're thinking how complicated is this? Right. And, you know, we started out as actually a payment app, which, you know, with a focus on the consumers, Um, But we quickly realized that, you know, the real opportunity for us was to take the platform that we built for ourselves to provide the ability for people to pay each other and really offer it up to any company as a white labeled service so that they can now become a financial services, almost like a bank to their customers. So I would call it, it's a form of white label banking Hmm. that allows, you know, you know, large brands like, uh, you know, like a mobile carrier or a retailer yeah. or an airline to suddenly become your, the next generation provider of a bank. How big of a company are we talking? Does this have to be like a mobile carrier, an airline, a giant mass retailer, or is it like how small and how, what, where's the opportunity here for, for retailers? It matters what you choose to provide. You don't have to take the whole suite. 
you can say, oh, I just want to provide my my customers with the ability to have a bank account, or mm -hmm. I want to I want to be able to issue my own branded gift cards that are not, you know, piggybacking on some other brand or some other kind of gift card. Everything we are invisible to the end consumer. And by the way, when that when I say consumer, that that could be an individual or a business consumer. Okay. Right. Um, so the 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 idea behind our platform is number one, it's complete. Number two, it's modular. So you can take one or all of the, the, the services that our platform provides. And the, the investment community has really responded to you guys too, right? Like it, so and and set the timetable for people. So you 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 had the 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 first foray that then pivoted more directly into financial services. Right, right. Um, when did, when did all that happen and, and how much money have you guys raised to date? So we launched the payment app in 17, 17. And, uh, and, and then it took it. And then, and that was the sort of the, the phase where we really truly understood how difficult it was to, to launch, a, a, you know, financial services because right. we right. Had, had to go through the process of, getting everybody to recognize us to you know trust us you eat what you to, cook so to speak right and 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 it took a year and a half from the moment we founded the company to the moment we actually went live which a year and a half in technology is like a century <laughs> right that's I, was right? Just I mean, yeah. the timetable is a little yeah. different i mean you know it's like, it's like dog, dog years, years but yeah. a lot more yeah like one equals 100 not one equals seven uh, so we were basically 150 years into this and, uh, and, and we realized, you know, th this is what, what we're doing is really hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's also hard for other people to do this. And we thought, well, why don't we take what we've learned and what we've built and really offer it up to others. And so that, th that process, you know, of realization that we weren't really into the, and we, we, our expertise wasn't consumers it took about a year and a half, another year and a half, another 150 years. <laughs> <laughs> another year and a half. And, and about uh, January of 2020, we started sort of dismantling the, the consumer business, but only when the pandemic hit and we had nowhere to go and nothing to do and no one right. to see, right. that we actually made the decision to not only pivot, I would say kind of reincarnate. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I decided that, that, uh, that because we were really making more than just a pivot, but really a reincarnation, that we would symbolically all get on Zoom, all the company at the time we had, we had 37 people. And July 31st, 2020, we all went on LinkedIn together in real time and you know, ended that one company and started this, you know, so we ended our employment with that one company and started employing the our oh, employee wow. with Alvier. So if you look at our at those the employees of that time, you'll see that we all started Alvier, Alvier on the same exact on the same month. date. How does how does this new Alvier, as you guys are all coming out with this new company, this pivot from where you were kind of pre-pandemic, how and why retail? Like for the retailers listening to this, like what what relevance does this have to them? How should they be thinking about the concept and the value that they can get from you know working with Alvier? At the end of the day, our business thrives where there are other with our where there are already customers. Okay. And, and where, you know, there are customers that, and, and, and I mean both, you know, consumers and businesses and, and the opportunity to really provide them financial services on one hand. Mm -hmm. and, and so, of course, you know, retail is core to everything that, you know, we do in our lives, right? right. We, we, it's not like some, you know, nice to have. Retail is all about the, the things that we buy that we need. Mm -hmm. and, and so our vision is, you know, in the retail world, there's always a, an on, there's usually an ongoing customer relationship, and especially with trusted and beloved brands, right? That 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 that, that you know that have an opportunity to add more value to be, to the, themselves and their business. And financial services is 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 perfect. I mean, the banks are incredibly profitable institutions, and. Mm -hmm. And, and so the question is, how do you add more, you know, revenue to your business? That's the first question. Right. And how do you create more efficiencies in, in, in terms of the financial operations of your business as exists today? Right. So it's, it's a double sort of, it's a double, you know, it's a sort of a, a double approach, which is, you know, on one hand, provide, you know, enhanced financial services to your customers. On the other hand, we can help streamline a lot of the financial capabilities that you might have today and what your reliance is on potentially, you know, second and third parties in the chain of financial services and remove a lot of middlemen 
so that the cost of, of operations goes down. Right. So, so the, there's two components, right? The increasing revenue on the on one hand and reducing costs and operational costs on the other. And both of those can be enabled with our platform. Well, Yuval, what was the what was the receptivity during the pandemic too? I'm curious because it seems like you have a time where there's uncertainty kind of surrounding both on the consumer side and the retailer side too. What what were some of your early customers during that time saying, you know, about the opportunity to potentially raise revenue here or take revenue from other partners they were working with, and then also kind of establishing that deeper loyalty or being able to provide customers this opportunity to have you know, access to financing where they might not be able to, or jobs might be lost or, you know, all of the chaos that was going on. Um, you know, I think the general reception, you know, towards what we were talking about was, you know, incredibly positive. I think ultimately people, uh, businesses are always looking for new ways to engage with their customers. They're always <laughs> looking for new ways to generate new revenue. They're always looking for new ways to create more efficiencies. They're always looking for new ways to enhance the customer experience and and get closer so the the response though i would say you know our first you know sales were you know were were a little bit into the latter part of the pandemic you know but generally we were working on a on a trajectory that started during the pandemic and 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 conversations that we we had with you know different kinds of customers whether it was retailers or telcos or or you know, or whatever you know, or or or, or people providing loans to to automobile uh, uh, dealerships, Th- those were all very positive. And people were saying, you know, we would like, to, you know, we're really looking for ways to streamline some of the, you know, capabilities that we have, as well as provide more value for the customers. So that you know, that message always resonates. The only yeah. question is, how do you get there? Right. You know, and and so what we provide, and you you said, you know, you make it sound really easy. <laughs> I mean, from from a lot from our from a lot of the things that we do, it is really easy. It's a question of a decision and vision, right. and then working together to figure out how to make the most of the the platform. Yeah, it sounds like it's a lot of just wanting to jump feet first. You know, when are the companies ready to jump feet first into the pool to mm-hmm. to approach this idea? So I want to get I want to get down to brass tacks now. I think this is a good time to kind of shift gears in the conversation a little bit to be a little more pinpoint too and terms of like, let's get into like what this really means. So like, what are some examples or anecdotes you can share where people are unlocking value as a, particularly as a retailer, let's stay in our sphere, you know, as a retailer by taking the approach of, you know what, we want to be our own bank. We want to jump feet first into this pool of embedded finance. We want to be our own bank. Talk to us about examples that are tangible in terms of where you're finding your customers unlock value. So, you know, let's say you're, I don't know, let's say Banana Republic. Sure. And you're giving a gift card out or you're giving a discount of 25% on on uh, on whatever it is that you're buying, and which is not uncommon, right? No. Um, why instead of giving a 25% discount, just not giving, get, and, and instead of just giving them a cash back of some sort mm-hmm. or, or, you know, or removing some, some of the, of the bill, say, if, you know, at every level that you spend, we'll send you a, you know, a um, a ten dollar basically voucher mm-hmm. that that's in the form of a Mastercard debit card mm-hmm. uh, or a Visa debit card, whichever we ch- you choose. We work with both, and then those customers will go out and use that card to buy other things, not just in your world, because it's not a closed loop card that you can only buy in Banana Republic. But it's somewhere that you can you go to the grocer with it. You can go to you know Express with it. You can go to the Gap. You can go to, and when they do that, number one, the 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 um, you know the retailer will actually see because we provide the information about what customers do with the card. Mm-hmm. So they'll get a better sense of what those those customers are doing and what they like. So they can basically refine the profile of the customer. And number two, they actually get revenue every time the customer swipes the card. Ah, okay. Because that's course, new so revenue, right? Relative to the new, old way of doing it. That's revenue. the key point, right? So think about it. Yeah. You're giving a discount. You're just giving a discount. You get nothing for it. Mm-hmm. You get what you get is potentially closing the sale. Mm-hmm. But what if exactly at the same price of the discount, you gave somebody money? First thing, there's something very attractive about that. Mm-hmm. Number two, you know, it doesn't cost you more. Number three, you get to see what they're doing with that money. And number four, you actually 
not spending the actual $10. You're spending the $10 minus the transactional fees that happen every time they swipe the card. So you understand that's mm -hmm. kind of a, an example of how a retailer can use uh, our services because we will provide be the one providing them the card. We will be providing them sending it out. You know, we we take care of all the logistics, yeah. but the but the but but the company, our customer, has a portal. They can go in and see who's used the card and who hasn't used the card. And the other great thing is, a lot of cards end up not being used, meaning that's called breakage. You probably mm -hmm. know that term. So. Instead of giving the discount, you're giving them dollars. Let's say they don't use it at all. Then you never gave the discount. They thought they got the discount. They got they, they, they maybe didn't use the card. You ended up with the breakage. So there's something very, very powerful about that you know, idea that there's, and that's number five, right? So if there's all the different components of the value. It makes a lot of sense. And that's, by the way, when you ask, is it good for smaller business or bigger business? It's good for any business. Right. That's a great example. Like what's another example? Because you said there's like, many different areas where you could take the approach of being your own bank, gift cards being one of them, issuing gift cards, uh, you know, being the own issue of your gift cards is one of them. What's another place, Yuval? Like, I'm curious, like- The very base, uh, uh, um, so use case is, is, is really to, to offer out, you know, bank accounts to their customers. And why, why is that valuable? Because yeah, here we go. Number one, you know, if, you, if their money is in your account, then every time they actually buy from you, you can actually, they, they can actually use a debit card that actually takes money from the account that you manage and puts it back in your, in your pocket with none of the cost of transactions. Mm -hmm. Right. You understand? Because yeah. you're basically not moving money around. Like yeah. if I put $100 in, in, in your account, you're the retailer. Right. And you and I also send you a debit card that lets you spend that hundred dollars and you come to my place of business and you spend that money. Then actually the money doesn't move anywhere because it's it's moving from me to me. Right. 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 So so rather than you you spending you you basically paying Visa and MasterCard, for example, to, you know, for, for, for money that comes from somebody's bank account of like Wells Fargo. Right. To, here you reduce your cost of, of, of operations pretty significantly, while at the same time you have visibility into customer and customer behavior. So the base use case, which is, you know, and 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 it also makes a lot of money. I mean, you know, just to give you a sense of how much money is made, mm -hmm. you know, for for, uh, for a customer that, you know, let's say puts thirty thousand dollars into their bank account, which is not a huge salary or not a huge amount of money every year. Not every month, every year, right, and, right. Not every day, and not that every would be day. a huge salary. <laughs> yeah, no, I wasn't. I wasn't thinking of daily of that salary of thirty thousand dollars, or a, even a monthly. You know, like let's put thirty thousand dollars. No, I'm talking about a, a you know, a, com, a sort of a reasonable number. Yeah. Okay, thirty thousand dollars a year. I know I can get perks here. So number one, you can give them perks because you're pulling in about three hundred dollars a month a year from that customer. Right. So you you have. You know, half just a million on the interest, right? Dollars. Yeah. Yeah. First thing you have carried interest. Mm -hmm. so, secondly, you know, think about it. If you have a million customers and they're delivering $300 a year, that's $300 million. Right. Right. If you have $100,000, okay, 100,000 customers, okay, it's only $30 million a year. So the, the numbers, you know, the scale of numbers is pretty significant. Um, and and the, the, obviously the challenge is to get people to put money in the bank account. And that's, you know, part of what we work with customers to actually help convince. Yeah. Um, Yuval, will you explain that a little bit too, for the audience? Because I think like, what do you see in this world? Is it like, I have my staples, my retailers that I go to, you know, monthly, do I set up bank accounts at each one of them? Like, what does this really look like for the consumer in your eyes now? And then, you know, in the next few years. I, I think you don't, you know, don't have 50 bank accounts, but I right. think we all, know, we all know, you know, what are the, what are the brands that we have the most affinity to exactly. and, and, and really the ones that we most, you know, are, you know, are, are patronizing. So mm -hmm. I would say in those brands that you basically kind of identify that, you know, that you have a lot of activity with, you can buy, you know, saying, okay, they'll be my bank. And by the way, it's an interesting question because, Part of it is just a long-term vision. 
Right. Not, not just about what happened today and what right. and, and knowing what happens today in the way that we do things today, but thinking about all the new entrants into the market, kids who are 10 years old today and eight years or nine years will also will, will be, you know, looking for a bank. Let's say they like to shop at, I don't know, Lululemon. Right. So, uh, that's their favorite brand, you know, and uh, would would those new entrants that are getting their media from TikTok, not from NBC and ABC, you know, uh, 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 learning the news from I don't know where, but but the, the bottom line is that there's a whole new generation of people who are decide making different choices in the way that they actually operate in the consumer market. And our, you know, thesis is, well, when they come into the banking space, they will also make different decisions than their parents in who they bank with because banks have been freed from, you know, from the traditional institutions and can now be the Lululemon, right? Mm -hmm. Or any other kind of brand. So a, a person who is a, you know, great fan of, I'm just giving Lululemon as, a, as an example, right. but, but because, because it's a brand with affinity um, and loyalty, they can actually become that place where people bank at least part of their money. Not that they're going to go to Lululemon and Target and CVS and, you know, I just don't, you know, and Honda and United and, you know, AT&T. No, it doesn't, it's not going to work exactly that way. But the idea is that when you do have an affinity or there is a brand that you actually patronize on a regular basis, let's say weekly or monthly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you have a lot more inclination to say, you know what, maybe I'll put a little bit of my money there. And so, and, and I can use it just like any other bank account, meaning I'm not just parking the money, but I can, and, and in fact, the retailer doesn't really want you to just park the money because they're making money, not just from the interest, but mostly from the swiping of the card, the right. movement of money the in and out of the money, the account, right. right? So the idea would be that in that case, because they're making whatever, uh, uh, you know, $300 on $30,000 of, 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 uh, of bank account, uh, bank accounts invested in the account, then they also have a lot more freedom to give you new perks. Right. They have a lot more freedom to give you be better discounts. There are actually, uh, there is sort of a virtuous cycle that happens from the placement of that money so that it becomes like the hub, you know, for the in and the out, but under that brand. Mm -hmm. so yeah, it, it's yeah. quite sophisticated in that way but the value is a hundred percent there it's not questionable the, the 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 challenge of course is always to convert those customers right mm -hmm. to make them actually say you know what i'll use target as my bank um i, I think that that's that's a that's an evolving proposition um and 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 we're probably going to see larger brands do that first but like we said before, the opportunity is there for smaller brands as well. Well, yeah, but like you said too, like with that type of incentive, there's a lot of incentives you can give back to your customers to convert them to this behavior. The other thing too that you got me thinking about, which is why I wanted to have you on this podcast because I think it's, it's such a heady topic. In a lot of ways we're victims to our own language. Like bank accounts to me, as you start thinking five to 10 years out, might even be, might even be the right words to use anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like you have a, um, the word that I'm coming is like a deposit account with the people right. that you most want to frequent. Right. And then right. you take advantage of that affinity you have for those brands. They give you perks, they give you incentives, and then you in turn move your money from, you know, Lululemon to Chick-fil-A to mm -hmm. Jiffy right. Lube, whatever, right? That's right. kind of where we're going here. And you can see where the value is very clearly as you're describing it now, at least to me, and I hope the audience can too. It's not dissimilar from what we're already doing with say like a Starbucks preloaded account, you know? Oh, I mean, it, it's what's happening right now, right? Right, and, and, and the difference is that it takes it one step, one big step further because right. with, the, with the Starbucks preloaded account, which Can't by the it. way, the, you know, Starbucks has about $30 billion right. in that preloaded account. Um, you know, people just parking their money there and they can't mm -hmm. do anything but buy Starbucks coffee with it which obviously for Starbucks is great, but for the consumer, you know, if I put down 50 bucks in a Starbucks account and then I don't go to Starbucks for three months, then that's money that I've just given. I've just funded Starbucks. Right. Um, you have, right. And I haven't funded myself. I've funded Starbucks and they don't give me interest on that money. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, but, but on the other hand, if Starbucks took it one step further and said, you know what, that money that you put in my account, you can use it anywhere. That's the concept of embedded, embedded, embedded finance. I and love it, that. It, I love that. It's pretty cool. 
So, so that, and, and then when you say you can use it anywhere, you can also say, hey, if you put a thousand dollars here, I'll give you 1% interest mm-hmm. or I'll give you 5%, you know, cash back or whatever the number is, whatever it is. But the basis has to be, I think what you, you hit the nail on the head. It's just like the Starbucks, you know, uh, account that where you, where you settle, you know, you put your money there right. and you, it's available to you when you go to a Starbucks. And for that, you get a perk, like mm-hmm. once every God knows when you get a free coffee. <laughs> and by the way, that's an incentive. Right. Believe me, to anybody. Nobody's you know? asking questions now about the fact that you, what you just said, that my $50 is sitting parked in my Starbucks account for right. God knows how long. I mean, and, that, and you're not getting even... interest, but they right. sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and you then know? too, I mean, like the other point is like, what you get me thinking about is like wh- where retailers that have frequent trips, like I'm thinking grocery stores, places like that, Dollar General, places like that, where you're talking thousands of dollars a year in spend mm-hmm. that could be unlocked and provide a tremendous amount of value to consumers if the retailers are willing to jump in and, and take this approach, which I think is kind of a no brainer as you're describing this to me anyway. I mean, it is in so many ways a no brainer, but it was impossible to do up till, you know, uh, the, the, you know, we, us and, you know, our yeah. sort of generation of fin- fintechs really started mm-hmm. figuring out what to do with, with it from a sort of more infrastructural and, and a point of view of B2B rather than B2C. So, you know, when until we came along with sort of these concepts uh, and the whole idea of embedded finance became more and more of a talking uh, uh, arena, you know, this was not easy to do. So it's not surprising that it wasn't done before, but now it's possible. So I think we're just seeing the very beginning of this. And then, you know, some key, you know, visionary companies are gonna take this on and go with it. And they will be the, the first, you know, movers in the space but ultimately it'll be available to anyone. Yeah. And that's why we love what we do because it's our job to look around those corners. And this seems like a corner that is mm-hmm. starting to emerge very clearly, at least in our minds, Ann and I. And so hopefully, hopefully the rest of the industry will start to see this. And I know you guys are already seeing a lot of great traction out there too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's already happening as well, but I think yes. you know, hopefully this just continues to happen because God, I, I want it. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Right. I mean, I, I agree with you. If you, if you, I always think about that when I go to Starbucks, I always think. Yeah, me too. I really like having the perks, but why am I parking so much money in their bank account? Well, I think a lot of our listeners will be thinking the same thing after hearing this interview with you, Yuval. Um, this was so wonderful. If people want to get in touch with you, they're, they're, they're like, now their wheels are turning. They want to get connected <laughs> with you, learn more about Alvier. What's the best way for them to do that? Well, they can just go to alvier.com, www.a.alvier.com. And we have an info section and uh, and it's just contact us and you immediately somebody will contact you. And as an added bonus, yes, they can go to my podcast. Oh, doesn't compete with your podcast. Quick plug. Yes, let's hear it. Uvelocity.com. That's Y-U-V-A-L-O-C-I-T-Y.com. And, I love it. And get a jolt of you velocity. I love it. Who doesn't I'll take need my a, jolt anytime? Yeah. Who doesn't need a jolt of you velocity? <laughs> uh, thank you so much. This has been you. Yuval Brisker, the CEO of Alvier, for sitting down with us today. And as always, to everyone listening, be careful out there. <laughs>